Okay, so we've got our block all cleaned up. That was an adventure. And uh, we've finished honing it. We gave it a coat of primer. Don't spray paint just over the cast iron. Give it a coat of primer first, otherwise the paint will just peel off. And uh, before she gets her pretty blue, she'll get some Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer. Um, she's ready to go. A couple of you guys in the last video asked me about a couple different things. The first is honing what stones to use. Um, this engine is getting cast iron rings. Anytime you use a cast iron ring, you use a coarse stone. If you're using a molly uh, or a stainless ring, then you go with fine. If you're honing for molly or stainless, start with coarse, then finish with fine. But uh, like I said, for, for this application, coarse is all you need. Other guys asked about the deck surfaces. So what I do with these is knock dowel pins out so you have a nice clear, you know, if your engine has dowel pins, a lot of motors don't, like Fords have those rings. Um, knock the dowel pins out, I wrap a, a sheet of 150 grit, 150 grit emery cloth around a, a, a block and just do your surface, you know, back and forth evenly. If you have any low spots where this thing's going to have to be sent out to be decked, you'll see them right away. In this case, both decks were beautiful on this engine. We just clean them up, give them a finish with this, and she's good to go. So that's it as far as the block goes. This thing is ready to assemble. Now the parts that are going to go in it. So the first thing is the crankshaft. This is one that came out of our motor. We noted, you know, it's intact, right? It doesn't have any obviously spun or destroyed journals. Um, but you still don't know the quality of it, right? So here's what you do. Here's what you need to know about crankshafts. Essentially, there's, a crankshaft is a spring. And to, to see the quality of the, of the metal that's there, how much life is left in the spring, you want to give it a ring test. So what you do is put it on a hard surface of concrete, take a small hammer, and just tap on the counterweights. And you see we got a sharp, clear ring out of that, which means that this crank still has plenty of life left. And that's actually, that sounds really good for a cast crank. That almost sounds like a forge crank. A forge crank will have a clear, like, you know, bell-like, you know, ring to it, very long-lasting ring. Cast crank, depending on the, on the quality of the cast crank, you know, you'll have a ring down to almost a thud. But if this crank was played out, you would hit it and it would sound like you were just hitting a block of wood. There would be nothing there. So, this thing rings, I know the metal is good. So now we want to check the journals. So, at this point, you just want to give the crank a basic cleanup. You don't want to go crazy with it because you don't know if it's going to be sent out yet. So you just give it a basic cleanup. And uh, the first thing you do is you're going to check your raw journals. So, on a V8 engine, you'll always see that there's a little line right here. And that's between the rods, between the bearings, and that's where nothing has ever ridden before. And that's your true size to the journal. So what you do is, what I do with these things is, you take a little scotch bright, a little fine scotch bright, give it a squirt of a penetrating fluid, and just clean that section off. Get that flat. And now you can measure, or you can even compare, to an undisturbed section of the journal. Let's give this a quick wipe. A little shadow of it, don't worry about it. But see here, if I run my finger over it, I can actually feel it, that, la that layer of tarnish. But here, there's nothing. So, now, Textbook, you want to use a set of veneers for this. I've been using digital calipers now for the last 25 years and I've never had a problem. Here's how you do this, right? The first thing you do is just check the diameter of the journal. Now don't use the wheel. Actually squeeze this together with your fingers, right? Slide it off gently and there's going to be the actual true diameter of the journal. Now what you want to do is you want to check the surface areas and compare that. So, and you do this in three places. So we'll do it here, right? We'll check our measurement. Then we'll do it here. We'll check our measurement. 
and then we'll do it like here and check our measurement. And the reason why you, you want to do it in three places is because if the crank is uh, worn, it'll be egg shaped. So you'll get different readings. You want to make sure that they're all within, let's say, half a thousandth of an inch of each other. And I checked this one before and it's absolutely, it's dead on, it's perfect. Uh, you do the same thing with the mains. Now, we know that this crank is good. A lot of guys worry about cracked crankshafts. And here's what you need to know about that. When a crankshaft cracks, it'll do it right here. This is the high stress area of the crankshaft between the cheek and the journal. So generally you'll see a crack that'll, that'll run someplace in here and it'll uh, need a pointer. I don't have a pointer. How do we do these videos? I don't have a pointer handy. Okay, just use, oh here we go. So you want to clean this area really good and inspect for any sort of cracks. You don't have to magnaflux them. You can generally see when there's an issue with the crankshaft. If you tap the crank, you know, during that ring part, and you get a dead, you know, doom like that, you can almost guarantee you're going to find an issue in here. The next step in all of this is cleaning out these oil holes. Oh, you know, while well, it's in my head, it just popped into my head. A lot of guys will buy old race cranks to build strokers out of. They'll buy them from, you know, funny cars or pro mods or, you know, something that's, you know, a high quality billet crank. And a lot of them come up as cracked, okay? And here's why that is. Factory cranks are only surface hardened. They're surface hardened, they're either nitrided or tough dried. And it's about a thousandth, thousandth of an inch, uh, a thousandth and a half of an inch thick layer that's, that's hard. Race cranks are hard chromed and there's a, a couple of thousandths of an inch layer of hard chrome laid over the journal. What will happen is the crank moves more than the chrome does and what you'll find is those cranks you'll find very very common to find cracks in this cheek area here but here's here's how you tell the difference between a dangerous crack and one that's not nothing to worry about. When the chrome cracks on those cranks you'll get a jagged crack right it won't be smooth it'll, it'll look it'll look like this right okay that's nothing to worry about that's the chrome on the journal cracking not the actual journal itself when you come across one that has a straight crack that means that the crack originated in the center of the crank and worked its way out so keep that in mind jagged cracks are from the outside in nothing to worry about and straight cracks are from the inside out it's junk so just keep that in mind, if, you, if you're at a swap meet and you're eyeballing crankshifts and you come across that, that's how you tell the difference between a good one and a bad one. So the only other thing we want to do with this is we want to clean through the oil passages. So you could use, you, I've used pipe cleaners on these, you can use this type of brush, but basically all cranks are drilled the same way. You'll get the oil hole from the main here will go through to the rod, right there, okay? So, and then this main feeds this rod. So basically, you just wanna feed a brush through there. Of course, they like to get stuck. The brush is stuck. This wasn't in the script. There we go. Maybe a little lubricant the next time. That guy doesn't know what he's doing. All right, so I'm gonna clean this thing up. Get it ready to go, and then next time around, we'll do the pistons and rods and assemble the short block. I'll see you tomorrow.